Hello! That's right, it's Father's Day, the day where we celebrate all dads who went out to get some cigarettes and came back shortly afterwards with some cigarettes. Yes, one of the things we like to do on Father's Day is give our dads an exciting and hilarious gift, sort of based around weird negative stereotypes around them. I don't know, I don't make up these holidays. But thank God for Poundland, who have uh, rode in like the white knights they are, to provide said to novelty tats for only one pound. And therefore you can like spend some money that's left over on things your dad might actually want. Anyway, let's see what hilarious novelty gifts they've got then. Well, we'll begin with what will your dad do? Maybe he doesn't know what to do with his life. Maybe he needs some giant novelty dice. Yes, for the most magnificent men, decision dice. And uh, that's quite clever, for the most magnificent men. You see, they don't say it's explicitly Father's Day, so then they can keep it in stock a lot longer. Clever. So, yes, um, it should point out these are all from Poundland, because Pound World didn't have much of interest in, and frankly, uh, they're about to go bust, by the looks of it. Which is a shame, because, you know, the more pound shops, the merrier, I suppose. But one cannot simply stand up to the might of Poundland and expect to live. Plus, a whole world of pound? I mean, they're spreading their resources too thin. Keep it to a land. Anyway. Let's see what happens if we roll these giant, very obviously moulded in two parts, sort of foam squeezy but feeling quite cheap, smelling of must, basically, um, dice. Hmm. Well, they, oh, I was going to say, but they have been printed fairly well, but I'm not sure about that. So, Dad, what should you do? Go to pub, but when? Now. There we are. Go to pub now, and you can avoid the rest of these shit gifts from your thoughtless and totally, totally evil children. Um, next, go on, what else should he be doing? He should chill out. But when should he chill out, oh mighty dice? He should chill out now. These are very immediate dice. So go to the pub and chill out. That sounds fair enough. Go to the Winchester, have a pint, wait for it all to blow over. Next up, eat out. Ooh, mum's gonna enjoy that. And... Now! <laughs> we can't do all these things now. Ah, wait. There we are. Now you can do it Monday. Well, I, I can't believe that worked quite as well as I thought it would. Um, so the options are go to pub, eat out, go to cinema, play golf, chill out, and bike ride. But when could you perform such tasks? Now. Next week. Next Saturday. Today. Tonight. Tomorrow. Can I get one that isn't now? Yes. What's Dad doing next week? Going to the pub. Well, everyone, Dad's an alcoholic who can't make his own decisions. Well, that's a, that's a positive start, isn't it? Not to worry, he can drink some tea in order to make him more awake. Maybe even some coffee in his hilarious Farter of the Year. I, I mean, Father mug. Yeah, so what we got so far? Dads don't really know what they're doing, and Dads fart a lot. Nice. Oh, there's a bit of a off porcelain here. But usually Poundland mugs are uh, very solid, because, you know, a pound is a decent price to pay for a mug, really. Um, so you can expect something decent. Look, you can put it in the dishwasher. It's microwave safe, and it's... I thought that meant dishwasher safe. There's another one that says dishwasher safe. Hmm. But wash before first use, which is always a good plan. Oh, and it's from the Magnificent Men Company, which I think is indeed an imprint of Poundland. But yeah, oh, printing's not great on that bit. This side's better. Oh, no, that's a bit iffy as well. Hmm. Hang on. Hang on. No, I take that back. It's deliberate because the little bits that are missing, look, on the old, uh, off the uh, end of year there, are the same that way round. Oh, it's deliberately distressed style. Oh, Poundland, you're so cool. I didn't even realise. But yeah. I mean, it's a functional mug, but yeah, that's, that's not a very funny joke, is it? Anyway, that's enough scatological stuff until we look at the warning cone. Uh, all right, let's get it out then. Uh, danger! Toxic gases! Give it ten minutes. Dun, 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 dun. Yep, that, that's a little cone. That, um, yeah, it implies dads do smelly shits. That, that's a, a, a hilarious thing for, for the entire world, isn't it? Great. Great. I swear to God, by the way, I've seen one of these for like six quid somewhere, and it was like remarkably similar. So, um, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, can we peel this off and use it for like a prop for Barshans or something? Yes, quite possibly, although it could take several years. Well, <clears throat> that's a thing. Blimey. Well, good job dads don't nick your food. Oh wait, telescopic fork. Food thief. Wait for it. Now that really does telescope actually. And you can now nick the chips from somebody else's plate. That is quite actually impressively long. I've got to say, it's also quite, uh, for a pound, it's got a fair bit of uh, strength to it as well. Not entirely sure how effective it would be of stealing food from somebody else's plate, but I think it would be quite effective at such things. It's one missile noise. Yeah, well, so um, when your dad's not farting, shitting, and wondering what to do and nicking your food, he could also be watching the game. The game will probably be football in this country. It's men's socks, but what do they say on the bottoms? Do not disturb. The game is on. See, it could have said the game is afoot. You see, it had been a hilarious joke, but unfortunately the socks would only have been useful for Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, hmm. So that, that's what they would look like in uh, when being modelled. Do not disturb, the game is on. I've got to say, really, any message that is being conveyed on the soles of somebody's feet is probably not worth following, to say the least. This just reminded me, I spoke to a tattoo artist years ago who said every so often, and he would always refuse this, but every so often somebody would come in and say, could they have the word Andy tattooed on the bottom of their foot? Like in Toy Story, like, like toys have, you know, exactly that sort of way Andy has written. Isn't that the weirdest fucking thing you've ever heard? Anyway, <clears throat> yes, men's socks, are f they're fairly thin. Usually the Poundland socks are fairly thick for a pound, but these, these are not amazing socks. But there we are. They are a, an hilarious novelty. I don't know if I said Anne hilarious, it would be a hilarious novelty. You don't ride Anne horse to Anne house, do you? Um, yeah, well, th there's a message for us all. And finally, how about something that doesn't in some way imply something negative about the person you're giving it to? But it isn't great anyway. Welcome to Tool Pens. Pens for tools. Oh no, now look what I've done. So yeah, they're like cheap biros, but um, they're inside like quite, quite ugly um, things to make them look like tools, except, you know, the, the hammer is disturbingly dainty and the screwdriver Frankly, it looks more like a bloated soldering iron or something, or, or a dart. It's just so thick there. Do they write well? Oh, oh, they've got they've done that thing. They've got a little bit of glob of glue on the end. You've never seen that before. You have to pull that off and then... Ah. Well, they write quite nicely, actually. And it's a very dark ink. That could actually be useful. What do you say, Sad Onion? Nothing. He is too sad. Well... <sighs> Those are things you could potentially... I mean, I suppose you could potentially give these to your dad if he likes DIY and writing. Although, if he likes writing, he'll probably, you know, have pens that are slightly more practical than this. But hey, it's a novelty, isn't it? And they actually call them tool pens, kind of implying they're actual tools, and also implying they're pens that you keep chickens in. No, wait, I may be thinking about this wrongly. Ah, Poundland. Well, <clears throat> I have been a bit worried recently, and that some of you... Oh, just look at the length of that barcode. What is this thing about giant barcodes that's coming up? Anyway, <clears throat> sorry, that's not relevant. This is what's relevant. I'm slightly worried that many of you don't believe that Poundland is the greatest company in the world. And as a result of this, I'm going to read you some recent news, which I feel will change your mind and put your brain on the path of righteousness, right? So on Twitter, <clears throat> there is a company called Thameslink. They are also a company off Twitter. And I'll tell you what they do. They run some trains, presumably ones around London, because they're called Thameslink. See, giveaway in the title. And they are, in common with most rail companies in the UK, absolute fucking monkey shit. And um, they had real problems recently. They brought in like this new timetable and they just cancelled... Oh, you've never... Seriously, I'm not even going to mention it. Just look it up. You would not believe the shit and the incompetence that was going down. It was unbelievable. Anyway, a man called Kevin complains to them on Twitter... Um, for the simple and very minor reason that, like, loads of trains were cancelled, he couldn't go anywhere. Okay, Kevin, I take that back. That does actually sound incredibly annoying. So he was not impressed. So, <clears throat> Thameslink <sighs> felt that the way to respond to him was to use this following message. Oh, very sorry, Kevin. Appreciate at the moment the service is less Ferrero Rocher and more Poundland cooking chocolate. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know, right? For starters, it's a fucking stupid analogy, because, like, Ferrero Rocher is a treat that you just eat straight in your face after unwrapping it from the silver foil, and you leave a little bit of silver foil in it, and it gets new fillings, and it feels like your mouth's being electrocuted. And cooking chocolate is stuff you use for fucking baking. It's an ingredient, guys. They're not comparable. Anyway, <clears throat> a Mr. Austin Cook, the retail director of Poundland, responded to this tweet addressing it directly to Mr. Horton, who I believe is the man who runs Thameslink. This is what that response said. Dear Mr. Horton, we couldn't help notice that your Twitter team described your failure to provide an adequate service as Poundland cooking chocolate. Aside from the breach of our trademark, we think you're taking the chocolate biscuit. In the past week, on the introduction of the new timetables, your rail company has one cancelled hundreds of services, two blamed a dog on the line for delays, and three secretly cancelled services rather than have to announce they're cancelled. Frankly, you have no right to use our name to describe poor service. We served eight million shoppers last week and didn't have to close any store due to leaves on the roof, the wrong kind of rain, or a shortage of managers. In fact, our Welsh pool store flooded, and our store colleague stood at the entrance to help customers get their shopping so we stayed open. We think we have a pretty good idea about what great customer service is compared to most rail companies. But if we ever fall short, perhaps we'll describe ourselves as a bit Thames Link. If you don't want to hear from our extremely twitchy legal team, we suggest you remove your tweet. Austin Cook, Retail Director. And if that's not magnificent enough, it ended with the hashtag Proudland. Thameslink's response was, Oh, very sorry for using your name here. I have removed the offending tweet. If you are not standing and saluting Poundland by now, then you are officially dead. That may be one of the greatest Twitter exchanges ever. Ah, oh, dearie me, Poundland. Call me, Poundland. Give me a bell. We'll, we'll work out some Ashen's action figures or something. It'll be the deal of the century. Actually, I wouldn't even bother calling me. Just stick out some figures called Sofa Review Idiots that look a bit like me or something. I won't see if it's funny. Like, boy, boy.